Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of all kings and Lord of all lords. And the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together God's people say with hearts of joy, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling the tender spirit the humbling spirit of the Lord Jesus this morning. We are told in Romans chapter 8 that he who has not the spirit of Christ is none of his. And that spirit, the essence of his spirit, is found in humility alone. And so I trust that you sense the quietness of his spirit as you begin your day this morning. Well, today is December the 4th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, we're continuing our journey through the Bible, and what an exciting, exhilarating journey this is going to be, friends. And as we begin in chapter 2, we have been privileged to have a front row seat as God has created all things. And though many of us have heard these stories many times throughout our lives, we must see them with a fresh eye, a fresh perspective, because it is only then we will understand the true majesty of what we've just been privileged to see through the eye of faith. And so our writer begins, Moses, in chapter 2, and he says, thus... Therefore, everything that I've stated, he's going to summarize what he has already said. He says, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all of the hosts of the heaven and the earth were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it. He set it apart from all other days. Because that in that day, he had rested from all his work, which he had created and he had made. Now, it's interesting because when we are given the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, we seem to think that it is then that God instituted the observance to the seventh day. But if you look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's already been made holy, and I want you to remember it. I'm not beginning something new. This has been set in place since the days of creation. And that's what we read here in verse 3. God blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it. Now in verse 4, he says, These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. Now the other thing to note here is that because God is recognizing and calling to remembrance the day that he has made holy, this is the day that the Jews, the, the Hebrew people, are going to observe throughout time, even into eternity. And so if we are to observe this day, each time it falls throughout the week, it would seem this would indicate that the day that God made holy is a 24-hour cycle as well. And so this is another confirmation that these seven days of creation, six days specifically, the seventh day God rested, are literally 24-hour days. Now he continues in verse 4 and he says, These are the generations of the heaven and the earth, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. That's very significant because when Noah comes on the scene, he's going to tell the people around him as he's building this great ark that it's going to rain. And that rain combined with the rains that will come from beneath the earth are going to flood the earth. And if you can put yourself in the place of those people then, they thought Noah was absolutely crazy because they had never seen water fall from the sky. Because as we are told in verse 5, the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and it watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Man became cognizant of his relationship with the Almighty. 
Animals don't do this. They only follow instinct. But man made a living soul recognizes that he lives to serve his creator. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and it became into four heads, four separate rivers. The name of the first is Pison, that is it which encompasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. And there is Bedellium and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gion. The same is it that encompasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hydacle, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Now the Lord God took the man and he put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. It's funny because there are many who think when we get to the kingdom, when we leave this life and we enter into the life to come, that we're no longer going to work. We're always going to work, friends. Man worked before the fall, and the only difference is now our work is by the sweat of our brow. And so God puts man into the garden, and his job is to dress the garden and to keep the garden. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And this is going to be the deception that the serpent, being used by Lucifer, is going to deceive Eve. Not Adam. Adam is deceived by Eve. Eve is deceived by the serpent. That's what we are told in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14. Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And so God has stated, you're not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the reason that he cast Adam and Eve out of the garden before they can reach the tree of life is because if they were have to eaten of the tree of life, they would have been eternally locked into a state of rebellion against God. And so God cast them out of the garden until he can send the Redeemer who will purchase man back and offer him a way out of his rebellion against the Almighty. But there is coming a day, we are told in Revelation chapter 22, where we will partake of the tree of life again. It says in 22 verse 2, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life. And this tree bare twelve manner of fruits. And she yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And so once we receive our glorified bodies and we begin our eternal state in the presence of the Lord Jesus, we will be allowed to partake of the tree of life. But God has said here in verse 17, not to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now verse 18, the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air. He brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Now we cannot begin to comprehend the intelligence that Adam had. Scientists tell us we only use about three to 6% of our brains. It seems as if Adam had full supply to his brain that he used 100% of his brain. And so because of this, we can only imagine what Adam was fully capable of. But it tells us in verse 9, he named every living creature. And Adam in verse 20 gave names to all cattle and to all fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. And so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, notice this, because she was taken out of man. Woman was taken out of man. In other words, woman once existed in man. One individual two states of being, male and female, man and woman. 
And because of this, in verse 24, a man shall leave his father and his mother, he shall cleave unto his wife, and they will again be one flesh. Now, we pointed this out in the previous video, but this concretes the idea in our mind. And so this isn't my opinion or what I am saying. This is what you can read straight from the word of God. And it ends in verse 25 and says, They were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. There was no guilt. It was absolute innocence. But then something went wrong. And that's what we're going to discuss on our next video together. So we'll end there today. But let us end by noting one thing because we're familiar with the story most likely. The remainder of the Bible is all about restoration. God is seeking to restore man to what he was originally created to be. And although this restoration was accomplished in one moment of time with Jesus' death upon the cross, we experience as his people that restoration each and every day, each and every moment of our lives. For we are constantly recognizing what we could be, our full potential in Jesus, and because of this we are fleeing what we have become or what our flesh is constantly nagging us to be. And this is our battle, friends. This is our fight. As we are told in Colossians chapter 3, if you have been risen with Christ, not all have been risen with Christ, but if you have been risen with Christ, seek the things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections, your desires, your passions, on things above, not on things of the earth. As God is restoring you day by day, turn all of your allegiance, all of your adoration, all of your surrender unto Him. And as you do, you will truly begin to despise the things of this world and all that it has to offer. Now may you have a blessed day walking with the Lord Jesus. And as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.